In a world full of book bags, sling packs, and chest bags, one dad sets out to find the perfect bag for his camera gear so that he doesn't have to leave his son Bob behind and can carry him. Will the Mystery Ranch DSLR camera bag be the one? Stay tuned and find out now. Hey guys, I'm Devin from Adventures with the V's. Thank you guys for tuning in today. This is what we're talking about. It's the Mystery Ranch DSLR chest pack. Basically, it's a $100 pack from Mystery Ranch. It's made to carry your DSLR and work on your chest, basically with another pack or um, even with the standalone, which I'll get to in a minute. What I really liked about the bag was that when I had a smaller camera setup, uh, everything fit in there really well. I could basically take the Lumix G9, which is not a small mirrorless camera, three different lenses, and I was able to fit the Mavic Mini basically right on top. It would just sit in here like so. Then when I wanted the camera, I could take it out, and the Mavic would just sit down in there further. But now that I've gone to the 10-25, to which is a big micro four-thirds lens, I can barely get the camera itself in here without stressing the zippers in the top of it. So when I was super tiny setup, carrying more lenses and actually more weight, the bag worked really well. Go to a bigger lens and it's not working so hot. A couple things that I think they could have done to make this bag much better is basically starting with these pouches. So I've been trying to still make the bag work because like I said, the camera and the 10 to 25 lens will fit in there. And what I was doing, it obviously takes a little bit of work, was sticking the 14 to 150 just in the side, which overall is not that bad. Now, when I have the camera itself in here, it takes up a little bit more of that room, but the issue we have is it doesn't take much of a bump to work that lens up out of there because of the way the elastic is. Me personally, I would rather see instead of a very tight. You have a toy body. Yes. I see that from your toy pants. Yes, you are toy like a tiger. Side pouch. I would rather see something like they have here on my 3D AP for the water bottles. So this pouch is tight at the top, especially when you have it loaded out, but you actually have some slack and some room down here. So it's like that, I could throw lens and all kinds of stuff in here. Um, now I know the goal for this is to be compact, but that wouldn't add that much extra size and it wouldn't add any weight. And you'd actually have a usable pouch instead of this. Um, when I originally started carrying this, I would put the controller for the Mavic Mini, which is pretty small, in the side pocket, and it's okay at best. You still have about an inch, inch and a half of room down here that you aren't using, but you still have the same issue. A hard bump, and it pushes whatever you have in there right out. Not the best setup. So it was, again, usable, but it wasn't ideal or wasn't great. And I think they could gain a lot by making these poofier basically like they do with the water bottle pouch. The other thing is this was also basically <laughs> unusable for me. Uh, you can fit like a cell phone kind of in there. This is just an iPhone X and it barely fits in there width wise and you're, you're really jamming it in there. Uh, height wise it's again you're stretching and putting stress on zippers so this is an extremely stoic pouch and about the only thing I ever used it for, and I'm not sure where they were or where it went, is like my extra Lumix battery. It could go in here. And then I had some SD cards and then maybe one Mavic Mini battery. It was all it would fit. Um, and again, it's, it's essentially useless because this exterior pouch is extremely tight and it has zero stretch to it. Toy buddy. Uh, if it was one of the accordion style um, where it basically overlaps and in the middle can kind of stretch out, this would be useful. I would actually be able to probably put this lens in this front pouch if it was made of that. Um, but with this, you aren't fitting much in there and it's essentially just a useless pouch. Same thing goes with this. If you fill the bag up to the top, 
this little pouch here, completely useless. I don't think I've ever put anything in this pouch. Essentially making, making this the accordion style that expands would be awesome. And making these so they weren't super dull. Oh. <laughs> <Got he. laughs> or even more stretchy, they're not super stretchy either, would help this bag out a lot. I would still be able to use this bag and carry a lot of things if they did that. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the different ways that you can essentially mount the bag and carry it. Uh, like I said, it is a chest rig or chest mount style bag. And one of the ways that comes is so you can carry it as a standalone. So very simple to use. You just clip. And clip. Throw it over your head. And you clip into these bottom straps. So this way, I didn't use much just because I almost always carry with a pack. But I actually really like this way of carrying it uh, if you don't have to have a pack or you're not using a child carrier. It was nice and tight to the chest. I was able to bend and there's a little bit of slack in there, but not terrible. The main thing with all of the basically west waist or like midsection pack um, straps that this thing comes with is that they're all extremely thin. And the reason this is an issue is because when you have this weighted and you do bend, it has a tendency to rise and then you're constantly adjusting this bottom pouch. I didn't mind the thinness of the top shoulder straps uh, just because they didn't hardly put any pressure, but around the midsection here, I was not a fan just because they did have a tendency to rise or try and work their way around. It's not as bad with this configuration as it is with the pack attachment configuration, which I'll show you now. So now I have the 3D AP on and this is how they attach. Basically it is made to go and hook into the straps already on the bag. So this is the way I usually carried it, either with the Mystery Ranch bag or our Deuter, Diter, however you pronounce it, baby carrier. Uh, you have a lot of adjustment. You can carry it really up high and basically tuck it right up there under your Adam's apple like this, or you can drop it down a long ways on your chest. So for that, it just depends on how you like it. Typically, the way I like to run it was a little bit higher so that it was more stable and took some of the slack out of these straps. So I typically carried it up here. Now the issue obviously is that this is flopping around so this is what they give you. Now when you're carrying the pack this is to me exceptionally terrible. Um, all kinds of play when it's not mounted on your back. So the options to me were basically I could run this and have it strapped to me that way, which I probably would prefer if I was still carrying this, to be honest. Or I could have it like this, and this thing moves around a lot. Even if I cinch this thing tight around my waist and get this bag exactly where I want it, you still have a lot of play, especially when you put three, four pounds of camera gear in there. So for me, what I think would be smarter would basically be to put some kind of pass-through on the back of this. Uh, that would allow you to essentially strap it to a sternum chest, which most decent bags have. Uh, if you had that pass-through, it would sit in there perfectly tight and there wouldn't be nearly as much wobbles. So, now I'm going to switch to the GoPro and show you guys what I mean as far as the current setup I have not working at all. So this beast is the Panasonic G9 with the 10 to 25 1.7. But when you take this bag, which is a DSLR bag, and you put this mirrorless camera in there with that 10 to 25 lens, what you now have is 
the lens actually bulges this out into your chest down here and as you can see it's clear up here like I talked about earlier it doesn't quite go all the way to the bottom so in addition to that filling up this bottom part you have a little bit of side room on the sides but you come all the way to the top and with the eyepiece you are now putting a decent amount of pressure right here on the lid area and you also then jam the camera strap down in there you're hard pressed to get this thing to zip correctly in addition you now have the camera bag filled up even more and it is even harder to get this tiny little 14 to 150 in there it's even easier to get it to pop out and fall which I've actually had happen while hiking. So in terms of size with the G9 and that lens, I am right at seven and a half inches from the eyepiece to the very end of that lens when it's fully compressed. So seven and a half inch camera is about the max you're going to fit in this bag. Uh, the lens itself on the end is right at four inches with sunshade. Now I could take sunshade off it wouldn't be so bad, but I'm not going to not carry my sunshade in case I need it. Or when you use that 14 to 150, you're obviously much smaller. Here we are right at six inches, so you lose an inch and a half, and we are at two and a half, so you lose another inch and a half there. Even with this lens, which was the biggest lens I had, I can throw this thing in here, have my camera strap tucked down in there, and still actually fit the Mavic Mini on top, and I'm not pushing the boundaries. So if you run a lens like this 14 to 150 that is considerably smaller, and you're at six inches, you can fit a Mavic Mini in there, and you're not really pushing the boundaries of it. I can still put the controller in here, it's just very tight and a lot of work and you still have issues with it working its way out so you do have to be mindful of that but it's not unusable is it ideal absolutely not but definitely usable overall I like the pack I'm gonna end up selling it uh, I ended up snagging a couple different bags from hex brand um, see them on Instagram all the time I hate buying stuff like that sometimes just because some of those things are not the best but ended up buying one of their sling packs this is only like 30 bucks and basically we're using this to carry all of our chargers and a bunch of different battery stuff as well as I'm going to end up throwing the Mavic Mini in there instead of using the factory case and the controller and we can fit a lot of things in here camp light in here got all our SD cards and a whole bunch of GoPro batteries in here. Nice little bag. And then we strap it to the Tacoma seat. So it's just sitting there on the back of the seat. Um, so that's one of them. I also bought a Ranger Mini DSLR, but the dimensions didn't work with this camera either. So I sent it back and got the full size. So that's something that we'll end up having coming. All right, well, I'll get the Hex brand some use and I will do a review on it soon. So thank you guys for watching. Mom and Bob are home. Hi, Bob!